Let's take a look at the Grand Hyatt here in Washington, D.C., in downtown, in what I call the new old downtown. It's not Georgetown. Uh, it's in the northwest sector. It's close to the convention center and Chinatown. I'm here for a convention, so I'm staying here because the convention center is so close. Uh, I'm Rudy Maxa. I don't know if you can see me here. Let's see. I'm a travel journalist and writer, and I'm wearing a mask because I'm filming this on February 27th, 2022. And uh, on March 1st, the mask requirement is dropped by the District of Columbia, but it's not March 1st yet anyway. So I put on the mask because the hotel requests that, as do local DC regulations. So let's step inside and check out the lobby. There is a bell desk, I mean, a Valley Parker desk and bell desk here. And I tell you this, I mean, it's not extraordinary in normal times, but I was staying at a Hyatt last weekend in Chicago, and I learned from the bell desk, the two bell desk guys, that they're only on duty when there's a convention in, uh, near the hotel. The hotel actually uh, connects to uh, the convention center outside of Chicago. And I was stunned that when there's no convention, there are no bellmen. So if you drive up and have a lot of bags or you're elderly or disabled, I mean, I suppose you can go in and dragoon a dress desk clerk, but there are no bellmen. So it's nice to have them here. Um, we're entering the lobby and this is a standard Hyatt lobby with the uh, skylight at the top and the rooms all around. This design, of course, was made famous by John Portman when he designed that the first hotel like this um, in Atlanta on Peach Sea Street, which was quite radical at the time to have, to have a courtyard or, excuse me, an enclosed, what do we call this? Enclosed high-rise lobby. Uh, it's pretty amazing. There is over in the corner here a Starbucks Reserve. You know, Starbucks Reserves are the fancier Starbucks with fancier furniture and so on. This one's not so fancy and I can't enter out of the hotel lobby. I have to step outside and come back in, so I won't uh, take the time to do that. But anyway, there is a full service Starbucks uh, down here, uh, just off the lobby. I'm sure that door will be open soon. Um, here is a something called the Cure Bar and Bistro. Bistro, I've not eaten here. I can't tell you about the food, but it was very well uh, packed last night, uh, which was a Saturday night. Um, there are tables down here, and you can go up the steps, and go up more steps, and you are in the main part that actually opens onto the street as well. Uh, the hotel tells me they're filled. I know there's a small convention here, the CUNA, which is a Credit Union National Association, is having a small meeting here. But I gotta tell you, I never felt like it was full. As you can see, this is what, 9.15 in the morning, I think, on Sunday, February 22nd, and the CUNA thing's going on now. But uh, there's clearly no crowd. There is a, uh, at the guest registration desk, there is, of course, a separate, uh, check-in desk for members of any of the three levels of Hyatt's uh, elite guest program. Those three levels are here. Discoverist, Explorist, and then Highest, which is Globalist. Um, I'm a Globalist. And uh, that's only because during COVID, they reduced the number of room nights you had to stay at a Hyatt to like, I don't know, 15 nights a year or something. I think it's normally 30 or 40 or 60. I don't know, look it up at Hyatt.com and you'll see what the requirements are for each level. But if you are a globalist, you get access to the club floor, which just opened um, after being closed for COVID uh, sometime in the last couple of weeks. This is a seating area off the lobby. Uh, these are all meeting rooms down on the lower level, but you come over here to the elevators. Here's the Credit Union National Association uh, gathering. Yeah. <laughs> it's headquartered here. It's a lobbying group for credit unions across the United States. Hi, how are you, sir? Everything okay? Everything is okay. Thank you, sir. I found the staff to be very attentive. Um, service is quick. I have not tried room service, but uh, but I couldn't ask for a more pleasant staff in all regards, from my housekeeper to uh, the woman who works on the club floor lounge and uh, front desk personnel and so on. And here's my elevator. Uh, bear with me. I'm on the 11th floor. This is a 12, 12 uh, story hotel. And unlike some Hyatts that are like this, the elevators do not, are not glass elevators that open onto the lobby. Many of these lobbies, these John Portman kind of buildings, or Hyatts, I should say, uh, you know, you ride the elevator up and you look down out in the lobby and so on. This is not, this is all the five or six elevators are enclosed. I have not had to wait long for elevators, but again, I get no sense that this hotel is, uh, is full. Although the 12th floor, I think as a globalist, I would be entitled to the 12th floor. I don't know what you get, better amenities, slightly bigger rooms, I don't know. Now I checked in, he, uh, the desk clerk apologized to me um, and said, you know, granted me club access, 
but uh, I'm on the 11th floor and it's just fine. I don't know what the difference is in the rooms. Okay, so on each, as you get off each elevator bank, um, you have a view of the skylight and then all the way down to the lobby that we just I just passed through. Um, bear with me as I walk to the hallway. What can I tell you? Uh, room rate, at least right now, is incredibly reasonable, less than $200, including room and tax. Now, of course, that fluctuates hourly, daily, if not hourly, um, like all hotel rates. And if there's a big convention, the CUNA convention is not a big convention, if there's a big convention in town, uh, room rates will obviously be higher. I should tell you, just as an aside, while we walk the long hallway to my room, if you're thinking of going to Vegas for leisure, always check the Las Vegas Convention and Visitors Association website because they have calendars. The website has a calendar that shows you when large conventions are in town, which is when you don't want to book a hotel room. Because Vegas rooms that are pretty famously inexpensive can double, triple, even quadruple in price, depending on the size of the convention or number of conventions and people in town. So if you're going to Vegas on leisure and uh, want to pay a more reasonable ho hotel rate, always make sure that uh, you're not going when, like the CES convention in January, the Consumer Electronics Show is, I mean, the rates are just ridiculous in Vegas. Anyhow, compared to their normal rates. Uh, anyhow, you can do the same in, in uh, this city as well. Certainly during a, you know, an inaugural or something major here, um, rates are much higher than, than, than otherwise. So if you're coming on a leisure trip and money's important, uh, as it often is, try to avoid the conventions. All right, I'm up here on the 11th floor. They gave me a corner room, which they said was a little larger than most rooms. It's not huge, but it's certainly satisfactory. So we walk in here. We have a closet. Now, I've been here two nights. Excuse my stuff all around, but uh, as a globalist, you get a couple bottles of water for free. Underneath here is a safe and a refrigerator, uh, but the refrigerator is empty, but you, I guess you can put your water in there if you have some food from a restaurant you want to bring in here to save overnight. Uh, bathroom is good size. Um, I will tell you, the shower has very good water pressure, uh, and that's really important to me. It's a good shower head, and uh, I would certainly recommend it. It's very clean. The grouting is clean. Very well done. The uh, amenities are Balmain from Paris. I guess Balmain. I don't speak French. I don't say Balmain. I would say Balmain. Probably Balmain or something like that. Uh, very nice. But what I like is there's horizontal space here. I must say, in the uh, Hyatt I stayed in in Chicago, there's no place to set anything. Here I've got a little cubicle where I can put my top kit. There's plenty of uh, room around the sink for, uh, you know, my razor blade, my toothpaste, my toothbrush, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Nice lighting, complimentary uh, lighting. And then we enter the room. There's a chair here that's positioned a little unusually. It's just sort of sitting here and sort of faces over here to the desk. But it's a nice chair to sit in if you're going to read. It's, uh, as I say, not uh, doesn't look out over the room. Uh, very good desk chair. Server goes back, swings back, leans back. Um, adequate working area with certainly um, about all the kind of plugs you can imagine here. Uh, cable television, you know, the usual stuff. Um, over by the bed. I think they could use a little art right here on this wall, don't you? I don't know, it's a little blank. Uh, by the bed is uh, our more outlets. I think there are two here. I'm using one of them right now. Put your iPad in there. Uh, a very good clock. You can see easily at night when you roll over and wonder what time it is. Uh, I have a king-size bed. Again, it's much better made when the housekeepers are done with it. And then a place for a, if you want to unfold your suitcase, a place right here. Walk over here, another nightstand, a couple more plugs by the uh, this side of the bed, little reading lights on both sides. And then I have a room that, uh, like the uh, lobbies off the elevator, looks down onto the uh, interior lobby. <laughs> Something very interesting, they have these placards is the wrong word, what can I say? They, these are affixed to the windows. And this one tells me that I'm about 2,000, well, I'm 2,816 steps from my guest room to the National Museum of African Art, History, and Culture. And I, I noticed because of this uh, black uh, a symbol here, I noticed by looking at the windows, you can't quite see them. Every window has this on it. Now, 
I, I'm guessing that every room has, you know, tells you how many steps to others because you are well located. You can walk into Chinatown. You can walk to the convention center. It's about three blocks away. Chinatown's about five blocks away. Good restaurants there. Um, Georgetown, you probably want to take an Uber unless you're, it's a beautiful day and you want to uh, walk for about 45 minutes probably into Georgetown. But there's shopping here. There's a very expensive uh, couple blocks called, what's it called? It's called the City Building or something. Very expensive apartments. A Tesla dealership on the ground floor and every brand name you would find in uh, an airport in Paris or Singapore selling expensive clothes. Uh, so that's the room. Um, very happy with it. Uh, the carpet needs, I noticed over here, uh, not to be too picky, but I noticed it needs a little cleaning there. Uh, so they could refresh this a little. It's a little bit worn. Probably time for a new carpet for room uh, 1127 here. But I have no complaints. I have an enjoyable say. It is very quiet and uh, uh, has everything really I need. So that's the Grand Hyatt room. I'm one floor away from the uh, club on the 12th floor, which I will show you as well. So the club uh, just recently opened. I'm filming this February 27th, 2022, and I think it opened within the last, reopened within the last uh, two weeks. But it's a very nice club floor with a sort of library setting over here, a little like, seating area here, culture artwork, seating area with a television set, and then there's a back room over here. I don't want to bother any of the guests. And the food presentation is obviously right here. This is breakfast. And it's a quite a generous breakfast. Scrambled eggs, all kinds, the usual bacon, croissants, but a very nice selection of fresh fruit. Very nice selection. And uh, granola, toaster, microwave, jams you can take home and pretend like you're staying in a hotel. Uh, cereals, your wines. There's a wine cooler down here for later. Uh, when happy hour is going on, and uh, this is the uh, twenty thousand dollar coffee making machine. You could either buy a car or buy this coffee making machine, but it does make good coffee. And uh, there's a back seating room over here. A little fresh fruit. That's my apple, which will be my lunch today. And I don't want to shoot any guests here, so I'll just shoot over there. So it's a back room and there's some guests sitting here, but I'm not going to shoot them. So, so that's the club. Some uh, iPads here. It's all in all a very, very nice Hyatt club, I must say. And the food offerings are, uh, are uh, A-level quality.